So, now what? I don't know, you want to sit on the couch and watch the fire roar? No, I would rather watch an R-rated animated Christmas comedy with a touch of a feminist agenda. This is going to be awful, isn't it? I wanted to explain myself. Yeah, mansplains. Sans... Sansplain. Nick, Saint Nick, Splain... Whatever, there's, there's something there. Yep, it's awful. Bah humbug. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. Connecting to Nord's virtual private network protects your online activities from the snooping eyes of governments, hackers, and your internet service provider. You can also use it to change your digital location by choosing from one of thousands of superfast servers all over the world. By doing so, you can unlock content on streaming sites that isn't available in your region, which has been extremely useful for me personally, let me tell you as well as get around regional pricing differences to get yourself the best deals while shopping online. It's simple and easy to use, allows for multiple connections on up to six devices with just one account, can be accessed worldwide, operates on a no-logs policy, comes with a built-in kill switch to keep you even safer, and has a whole host of other useful features and benefits. So click the link in the description or go to nordvpn.com slash cynical reviews to get yourself a big discount on a two-year plan with a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. And just for you guys, you can get the best deal possible on NordVPN with an extra month free exclusively for those who sign up through YouTube. And you'll be helping to support me and my channel by doing so. That's nordvpn.com slash cynical reviews to get more out of your internet today. Merry Christmas, you beautiful bastards. I come bearing the greatest of gifts. Cringe. CJ, why'd it take you so long to get a Christmas video out? Because burnout. Burnout sucks. IGN would give it a 10 out of 10. Just when I thought The Prince would take the title for the worst comedy of 2021, aside from the year itself, which has been a black comedy of epic proportions, HBO came in clutch to snatch victory from the jaws of... Victory. You already had the title, HBO. You didn't... you didn't need to do this. So... Why? But just to rub salt in the wound at the end of this cursed year, they had to put out what is actually the worst comedy of 2021. Santa Inc. You may have heard something about it already, probably the only thing you've heard about it. When it came out, the reaction was a resounding no, and it currently stands as the lowest rated TV series on IMDb. I've not seen this much backlash to a comedy trailer since Ghostbusters 2016, and the comparison is pretty apt. We can't really talk about this show without talking about this reaction and what inspired it. And we have to wade into the dreaded swamp of politics in order to do that, so let's just get it out of the way early. If you don't care about that aspect of the discussion, skip to here. I wouldn't blame you. This shit is exhausting. Now fasten your seatbelts, it's gonna be a hell of a show. Ha -cha -cha. Produced by and starring comedians Sarah Silverman and Seth Rogen, Santa Inc. tells the story of Candy, the head elf in a corporatized North Pole who wants to become the first female and Jewish Santa, taking over from Rogen's incumbent. Spoilers, if you give a f After many trials and tribulations, she doesn't get the nomination, and decides to rally the disgruntled staff of Santa Inc. to strike for better conditions, thereby getting her old job back, except this time she has Santa's balls in a vice. Remember, I know everything. So I own you, fat man. Spoilers over, if you gave a f It's a corporate girl boss story, but set in the North Pole. That's pretty much how they marketed it. So it's a lot like Succession uh, with elves. Yeah. <laughs> succession with elves? That's how we sold it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving aside questions about why an elf would even be Jewish at all, the trailer was pretty upfront with the angle the show intended to take. There have been many Santa Clauses throughout history. Some were loved, others loathed. But the position of Santa has mostly been a white man's game. Exactly, it's f***ing crazy. Things have got to change. Yeah, that's what everyone wants to hear about at Christmas. Contentious issues. As if we don't hear enough about those every day as we doom scroll through Reddit while taking a sh**. It blew me away in about six million different ways. Because Silverman and Rogan are well known for being Jewish, the trailer attracted a deluge of thinly veiled Jew jokes and comments, until HBO disabled comments entirely and thus stifled all legitimate criticism. And elf has even become a code word for Jew in some circles, apparently. 
Jew, 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 Jew. Jew, Jew, Jew. Wow. While there were some genuine anti-Semites who leapt at the chance to have a cheeky, oh, don't mind if I do, most of it was just edgy shit posters from places like 4chan, where there was actually a campaign to do this exact thing. This one's pretty funny though, not gonna lie. And here's the thing about shit posters, they're doing it because they think it's funny. And they're trying to provoke an angry reaction from you because that's even funnier to them. But that's exactly what Rogan and Silverman did. They basically gave them what they wanted and in the process made it look like all criticism of the show was motivated by racial hatred. Well, slap my ass and call me a white supremacist. There's no way that's going to get taken out of context. Discounting the obvious bigots, I do think the reaction was a little bit overblown. But still mostly justified for a number of reasons. Aside from the trailer being monumentally unfunny, but we'll get to that. Like I said, no one wants to hear about controversial issues in their Christmas media. You're taking something that's meant to unite people to at least some extent in these troubled times, and you're making it divisive. That's gonna rub people the wrong way, there's no getting around that. I also think people are sick of everything being politicised nowadays, and I don't blame them. When you see something like this, it's just eye-rolling. Why does there need to be a female Santa? What's wrong with Santa being an old white dude? That's kinda important to his image, you know? A bit suspect, I think. It's not like this premise could never work at all, but could they not think of anything better? It just feels so unnecessary. I highly doubt that anyone was clamouring for a girl boss story set in the North Pole. And I think people resent being lectured to on moral issues by celebrities who either have a history of doing edgy shit themselves, or who seem just a little out of touch with the everyday person's experiences. And when people say, don't put politics into X, they don't mean, don't explore political themes or ideas or related subject matter. They mean, don't shove your personal politics in our faces in your creations. Which is exactly what Santa Inc. does. Why the f*** are we always on Thanksgiving's time schedule? The whole holiday is based on an imperialist lie! They couldn't resist forcing in jokes about American politics, anti-vaxxers, and white supremacists. In a show about Santa. More American kids believe in you than they do in vaccines or the Holocaust. That's great. I mean, disheartening for America, but great for us. If they're young enough to believe in Santa, I should hope they don't even know what the Holocaust is. You gotta wait until there's some hair on their chest before you hit them with the heavy stuff, you know? Maybe the wacked should be something that deserves it, like wacka white supremacist. Even as someone who has no patience for anti-vax or racist bullshit, this is groan-inducing. I'm a loser who sucks. They even throw in a reference to AOC for some reason? Are they her mates or something? Do they think the show's demographics are gonna be like, Yeah, AOC, step on my balls, mummy! Now, I don't actually mind creators putting their politics into their creations as long as they follow the age-old mantra of Don't f*** it up. Which... Well, we're sat here, so... Yeah. They f***ed it up. If you're gonna put messages or your own politics into your media, you'd better do it with some subtlety, which we've already seen they're incapable of, or you need to make sure that it's implemented with some skill, which, again, it isn't. The show isn't even good at expressing the progressive message that it's trying to, and just comes across as very pandering. Communally run and environmentally responsible? Wow. This is spank bank material for me. First off, they say that the position of Santa is a white man's game, but the next Santa was going to be a black man before he quit to work at Amazon. And Candy never once faces discrimination because of her race. Race never becomes relevant, so why even mention it unless you're virtue signalling or just trying to be deliberately controversial? Oh, I'm so happy for Timmy, the totally uninteresting white male choice that will do nothing for this company. Shut the fuck up. Stop being a fucking cop. There have been women prime ministers, women presidents, but there has never, ever been a woman Santa Claus. Or a Jewish Santa Claus. Exactly, it's fucking crazy. Things have got to change. Again, why? Why is this so bad? When she says this, there's been no indication that the men are doing a bad job, so why does it matter except to tick off a diversity box? We're supposed to just take man bad as a given. T minus 30 until a vagina finally sits in the red suit. Or another penis, who knows? Why are they phrasing it like that? It sounds so gross. Just do women's comedy stuff, you know, talk about how fat you are and how you want to have sex with guys and then say, my vagina a lot. They do actually address the why a female Santa criticism, but of course they do it through a straw man. Santas have always been male. For the same reason, there have only been male explorers or US presidents or serial killers. And then a stand-in for Greta Thunberg axes the shit out of the straw man because assaulting people with opposing views is good, apparently. Yeah, girl, 
I'll millennial the shit out of that old f Oh my god, shut the f up. She wants to break through the glass ceiling, which is fair enough in principle, but aside from some dismissive comments from her peers and the company board... A woman Santa! What if she thinks she's handing out candy canes and they turn out to be some f***ing tampons? <laughs> it's not like this stuff doesn't happen, but this sounds like one of those outdated sexual harassment training videos. Word around the offices, you've got a fat cock. Yes, I do. I've got a fat cock too. Maybe we should rub our fat cocks together sometime. But anyhow, aside from this, she faces almost no resistance from the supposed patriarchy, and almost everyone is supportive of her going for it. Especially Santa, who is unironically a massive virtue signaler. I'm the most progressive Santa in history. I'm a real change agent. I'm an ally, which I can't label myself as, but I've been labeled that by others. How awesome would I be to have chosen the first black successor and then the first woman successor? I chose the first black successor. That was a big deal. Everyone was like, this is crazy. You can't do this. And I was like, no, it's time. It gets pretty nauseating. Candy's a Jew too. She checks off two boxes, woman and Jew. Holy shit. Holy shit. A woman and a Jew? I'll go from historic to like fucking legendary. Ah! If they're trying to take the piss out of him for doing this, then it's pretty hypocritical since the show as a whole does the exact same thing. But there we go. Derogatory comments aren't great, but they could have gone much harder with the misogyny if that was the angle they were going for. Is this really the best they could do? And in the first few episodes, they really have to reach to show you how hard done by she is. You know, I'd normally find that repulsive, but you're actually inspiring me to, like, make Santa Inc. safe from predators who force women to remain scared and silent, so... But you just punched him in the face with zero consequences. How are you not safe already? After she goes to tell Santa she wants to run for his successor, he invites her into his previously men-only party, where they're obviously doing manly things, like shaving together. I don't know about that one, but let's just go with it. And she's like, nah, I'm out. Fuck those douches. Why though? The only bad thing they did in that scene was this guy had a terrible understanding of female anatomy. I don't want to be sued if I slip up and make her infertile. The baby needs the hair to stay warm. And she's the one that didn't want to stay. This is the level of self-victimization we're on. In this kind of story, you're supposed to sympathize with the protagonist, which makes the cause seem more worthy by proxy. But unfortunately, that's almost impossible. It doesn't help that Silverman has a rather grating voice, and not grating in an endearing way like, say, Gilbert Gottfried. HOLY FUCK IS THIS WRONG! BUT HOLY HELL IS IT ERONIC! Every storm runs out of rain, just like every life is not <laughs> all pain. Whoever let her do voice work should be executed. For legal purposes, that was a joke. When she screams in excitement, it sounds like a pig being castrated. <laughs> At least they acknowledge it, I suppose. Despite that annoying, high-pitched voice of yours, I believe they'll listen- But Candy's personality is just as abrasive. This feminist icon is both a hypocrite and massive piece of shit. And just so you know, the women of the North Pole make fun of one of your dicks. Have fun wondering whose it is. Because body shaming is okay when we do it. In episode 3, she gets invited to interview for the job of CEO at an Easter-based company. But she refuses because the previous CEO said that she was ousted because she had an abortion. Or hundreds of abortions because she's a rabbit. That's the joke. But the company man just says, Oh, that was a lie. And she immediately changes her mind and never questions it. So I guess her morals don't mean shit. My body, my choice. Amen, woman. Well, you didn't care about it 20 minutes ago. After she struggles to win over the board of Santa Inc. by being one of the guys, she pretends to be weaker than she is in order to appeal to their protective instincts and get ahead. Way to represent the fairer sex, am I right? She even admits it to Santa, and he doesn't care. He's like, cool, good for you for playing the game. When Santa goes into a coma and she gets appointed the temporary Santa, she hopes that he dies so she can keep her position. Miss Smalls, there's an update on Santa's condition. Oh my god, is he dead? I mean, is he okay? Is he well? When she eventually doesn't get the nomination, Santa explains that it's because she's bad with kids, which is a pretty vital part of the job. He even offers to let her run things behind the scenes, which is more than reasonable, but this is her response. Go fuck yourself. She then flies off to have a strop and kills a pigeon just because it was annoying her. Baby, 
mess with candy, you get the cane. Worst of all, though, is when she accidentally hits an asshole deer with her car and then leaves him to die in the snow so that her friend can have his job? What if I did something really bad, but... You know, ultimately, it's for the greater good. Jesus fucking Christ! If your main character isn't worth giving a shit about, then your cause is also lost. Oh, and they also have not one, but two reindeer characters who are black stereotypes. Girl, look what I stole from under Donner's bed. Let me just get right up front here in the driver's seat. Who's ready to smell Junior's ass tonight? <laughs> Which is funny, considering how progressive the show considers itself. So all in all, it's pretty terrible and ham-fisted at getting its point across. This is how you don't do politics in media. You're not doing anyone any favours, you're not inspiring anyone, and you patting yourselves on the back and guffawing about how progressive you are is really not endearing. Wow, that discussion went on longer than I'd intended. Right, now that the cancer is out of the way, we can move on to the good stuff. The comedy. What comedy? Yeah, exactly. If you're gonna faceplant this hard with your messages, you need to be funny enough to compensate. Well, I'm calling this the worst comedy of 2021, so how do you think that went? I appreciate terrible comedy about as much as I appreciate leprosy. And Santa Inc. has all the hallmarks of bad comedy. And leprosy. I really did try to give it a chance because no one wants to sit through a comedy and not laugh. And honestly, I will laugh at the dumbest shit. But I'm sorry to report that during its eight 20 minute episodes, I laughed exactly twice. And it was less of an earnest laugh and more of a. Heh. <laughs> this joke from episode one, which caught me off guard. Don't yell at me in front of your friends. Then don't be a dumbass in front of my friends, dumbass. I thought things were better between you guys since the baby. What do you mean? They are. Heh. <laughs> As did this joke from episode three. Osama Bun Laden. Heh. <laughs> it's played off as a terrible joke, which it is, but this Christmas cracker style humour is better than 99% of all the jokes in the series, which should give you an idea of how bad this is. Catching up on some porn, huh? Uh, that's right, boss. Just porning it up at the office. Well, if you need to finish, you know, flicking it or uh, whatever you're doing down there, you know, just slapping your flaps. I can duck out. Just let me know. Oh, God, stop. From the makers of Sausage Party is not exactly a ringing endorsement. Fans of Sausage Party will feel right at home, while everyone else will want to lace their mulled wine with cyanide. Here's a scene from Sausage Party and a scene from Santa Inc. side by side in order to perfectly demonstrate this point. Great my asshole! Everything we've ever known is a dirt-covered pile of shit, jacking off in our fucking faces. He fucked us dry, folks. I'm just gonna say it. The warning would have been lube, but he withheld that. Covering our eyes with their cum, so cum covered we can't fucking see! So, we are all chafed this morning. Super chafed. But, this rash will go away, just like Brent did. It won't spread from our nethers to cover our entire body. We don't know! We don't know they're jerking off into our eyes! Our faces! We will recover from this unlubricated fucking Brent gave us. It's yet another adult animated comedy that thinks that copious amounts of swearing, sexual references and gross out humour are by themselves adult and funny. Which they're not. And it's the same kind of adult humour you'll have heard countless times before. Awkward, obnoxious, or weird sexual exploits. Devin and I are dating and fucking. And fingering with an eye towards anal? Yes! TMI. You see, Candy, earlier today I was going down on Mrs. Claus. Cunnilingus. She doesn't need this information. No, no, she does, and it's fine. Look, Candy, it's just that to get my tongue at the right angle, I have to spread my legs like a dog. Like Drunkenness, fart jokes, swearing, rudeness disguised as wit, and so on any of which might be fine occasionally in a proper context that makes them funny. But of course, they're sprayed around so liberally that they quickly overstay their welcome. In the opening of the first episode, they swear five times in 20 seconds to let you know, oh yeah, we're an adult show, none of that kiddie stuff. Fucking shit. Bullshit. Fuck that stupid bunny. What the fuck? And later in the same episode, they say the word bitch 16 times in one minute. Bitch, 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 bitch,
The large amounts of forced sex references, gratuitous nudity and sex scenes will also make your butthole clench tighter than Scrooge's wallet. <laughs> See what I did there? Oops, wrong hole. Is that what you tell your wife? <laughs> no, ma'am. I tell her my truth, which is that anal rocks. Just to give you an instance of how this can work, in one episode of South Park, Mrs. Garrison and Xerxes are about to go in for a romantic moment, and then it abruptly cuts to them passionately scissoring. It's this juxtaposition and the throwback to an earlier scene in the episode that makes this funny. In Santa Inc, we have a scene where one of the characters turns down another's offer of a date, then it cuts to Santa fucking his wife from behind while she just lies there and takes it. These two scenes have nothing to do with each other, so the juxtaposition doesn't work. And his grunts start playing before the scene transitions, so you know it's coming and quite a bit of the shock value gets lost. Oh, oh, oh. So it's the fact of the clauses having sex that's meant to be shocking and funny in and of itself. Which it isn't, because this is like the third time we've seen it by this point. And that's just one example. You could maybe get away with a, Hey look, that old person is naked! How gross and funny is that, lol? Scenario once, or maybe even twice in a show. But of course they overplay it, because it's not like they have better material. Like, a character will come in, say they had sex the night before, and that's the whole joke. Before. Guess who finally banged daughter last night? Not sure. Holla! It's just lacking any subtlety or intelligence. Of course I get it, it's not subtle at all. And it's hardly groundbreaking material. Jokes about Mrs. Claus sliding down Santa's chimney are the kind of thing you'd expect to see in a boomer's Christmas card. Although despite Seth Rogen's reputation as the weed funny man, they only have Santa get high once in the whole show. Gotta admire their restraint there. Actually, he does it twice, but that was in the final episode, and by that point I wanted to off myself, so... And here's the thing, Santa Inc.'s crude humour, its adult interpretations of children's subjects, and subversive takes on long-established tropes, would have been considered shocking at one point, and would have had more impact due to their deliberate breaking of societal taboos. But everything it does has been long done by this point, and the market's saturated. What was once cutting edge is now dull, and the material just feels stale and uninteresting. But even if it wasn't stale, it's poorly executed, with all the jokes falling flat for various different reasons. It's not like the delivery is bad, at least if we're talking about the voice performances. It's just that the jokes aren't funny or well-constructed. Even the most skilled comedians in the world couldn't polish these turds. Hey, I have a rape whistle. Ah, this is my consensual sex whistle. Fuck, where's my rape one? Rape. As you might expect, Candy and Santa are the most well-developed in terms of characterization and humor, although that's not saying a lot. But much like other bad adult animated comedies, most of the characters have about two personality traits, and 99% of their jokes will center purely around those. Candy's friend Cookie is made of gingerbread, is a new mother, and treats her husband like shit. And that's all of her jokes. A dream? Must be nice. I don't have dreams anymore because I don't ever sleep because for some reason I wanted to be a wife and mother. Oh, I'm sorry, fun size. You know I love you, baby, right? Candy's other friend Goldie is a sassy black woman and horny. All this training does make me a monster in the sack. I had a three-way with Prancer and his girlfriend last night and no one was complaining. Candy's grandpa is old and horny. If I die, get rid of my porn! Candy's mum is a terrible mother. And horny. Peter, is there somewhere I can, uh, how do you say this lady like, scrub the travel dust off my beaver? Put a comb through my pubes? Candy's teenage brother is an idiot. And yep, you guessed it, horny. Our dicks were identical, the veins, the shaft, the girth, our junk separated at birth. Santa's assistant, Jingle Jim, is very gay. And also very horny. Which is a bit of a stereotype, but okay. I have to shave every week. I'm talking about my genitals, dum-dum. It's a gay thing. Yes, I am gay. Mrs. Claus is miserable and the subject of Santa's horniness. Let alone, you know, go down on me. <laughs> Actually, it's been 20 years. And the list goes on. It becomes so predictable and formulaic that I was actually shocked when a character made a different kind of joke. I'll always regret never being in a war. Legal murder is the shit. Trying to identify the jokes in order to critique them was actually quite difficult. 
because a lot of the time they were simply so unfunny that you wouldn't even consider them to be jokes as opposed to anything else in the script. Until you think, wait, was that meant to be a joke? And then you realise that it was, and you just kind of scratch your head and go, what? Occasionally they have what could be a decent joke, but then they shoot themselves in the foot by ruining it. They might use it so much that it stops being funny at all, as we've already seen. They might play it out for so long that it stops being funny. There's a running joke about Cookie eating herself, which raises all sorts of questions. And at one point, she eats her husband's leg. Oh my god. Oh, I had this nightmare that someone threw a grenade at my legs. They were blown off. But it was just a dream. <gasps> His reaction could have been funny if he just woke up, saw the leg, and screamed. But they make it go on too long by trying to add to the joke where it isn't necessary. They might add in extra lines where it would have been funnier if they just left it at the punchline. Shut up, Devin! Shut up, kid! You shut up, Goldie! Ugh, I need a fucking drink. I feel like this is my fault. Yeah, it is, dumb fuck! Oops. This could have been funny because of how oblivious he is if they just left it at his statement but they just couldn't do that. They might explain or offer meta-commentary on the joke, thereby making it not funny. I know you're right, but do you really have to call me bitch every time you say something? Yes, bitch, because it's empowering to call you bitch, bitch. And many other methods of comedic face planting. And to be a bit pedantic, sometimes the jokes just don't make sense. For example, having a taser be Christmas lights is kind of funny because it fits with the setting. But then there's a guy playing snooker with ball balls, and of course they break. I get the joke, but he works in Christmas land, so surely he would know that they would break? So why would he be playing with them at all? Sometimes they'll put forward something that they assume is a joke, and it's structured like a joke, and they expect us to accept that it's a joke, but they haven't given us any reason or context for why it's funny. So we can't laugh because we literally don't understand why it's even a joke? Here's two examples. And hey, thank you for the snacks, Curtis. Those chicken nuggets were an absolute poem. The secret is basted in its own fat. So the punchline is that the chicken is basted in its own fat. But what's funny about that? And if it's not a joke, then why even include it? Because it doesn't add anything. Did I tell you his sister's dating an ornament? Everyone's freaking out about it. Again, this is clearly meant to be a joke, but why is him dating an ornament funny? Why would that make them freak out? Like, they don't give us any context. And then there's just the multitude of jokes where the punchline isn't even funny. But I don't want to repeat myself too much. As a result of all these blunders, this comedy ends up being painfully unfunny and thus incredibly cringeworthy. It feels like one big in-joke. I feel like you had to be there in the writer's room, having fun and huffing paint alongside them in order to find this amusing. Is there at least a well-written story beneath all this to cling on to? Well, the answer isn't just a no, it's a go fuck yourself! Aside from the total failure of its humour, the show is really boring. The main character is obnoxious and unsympathetic, so it's very difficult to get invested in what happens to her. And since almost all of the narrative stakes revolve around her struggles to achieve her goals, because we don't care about those goals, we have no reason to keep watching. And as I said before, the other characters are mostly flat and also irritating, so there's nothing to care about there either. The voiceover performances are at best mediocre and at worst utterly annoying, which makes the characters even more unlikable. Neither are the storylines particularly interesting. Just take any story about the North Pole, combine it with any modern girl boss story, and throw in an unhealthy dose of sausage party, and you have about 90% of what happens here. And of course the episodes are padded with pointless shit, just to make things even more tedious. The story does ramp up a little in the last few episodes, but you'll have tuned out by then, trust me. Right down to its name, Santa Inc. tries to perform a half arse cynical deconstruction of Santa, the North Pole, and the mythos surrounding all of that. This Santa is a corrupt, vulgar piece of shit, the North Pole is run like a corporation, the reindeer take meth to increase their speed, and so on. It's supposedly a Christmas show, but it seems to think that it's somehow above and better than that genre because it's being critical and subversive of it. And I can't help but get the impression that it's being irreverent about Christmas just for the sake of it. Or worse, for the sake of grabbing attention. Shut up, you worthless assholes! <coughs> but even ignoring its terrible execution, nothing substantive or valuable comes out of this deconstruction. It's like if you had Santa get drunk, vomit in a stocking, pour it on himself, and then writhe around on the floor. 
It's not bold, it doesn't say anything, and anyone intelligent will just shrug and walk away. Speaking of execution, which is what the writers deserve, again, that's a joke, FBI, leave me alone. I just want to quickly talk about the animated part of this adult animated comedy. I love stop motion, and I'll give them at least some respect for at least trying to work in this medium. And at a casual glance, it looks competent enough. But when you look a bit closer, the flaws clearly emerge. A lot of the mouths are photoshopped on in post, which I understand to some extent because moving mouths are one of the most difficult things to nail in stop motion. Unfortunately, it doesn't always look good. Especially with Candy, her mouth looks too smooth and flat when compared to her face. And it isn't just the mouths, some other objects that are photoshopped in also look pretty bad. You can sometimes see parts of the green screen left over from when they chroma keyed it, which is really not acceptable in a professionally produced show. They also frequently composite characters into shots rather than have the models be present in the sets themselves. I'm guessing this was a money or time saving measure, but to me it doesn't feel authentic, so I have to knock off some points for that. You can also see the cropping around them and where the chroma key didn't always work. And this isn't like Robot Chicken, where the animation was deliberately shit, but that was part of its charm. Santa Inc. is trying to cheat us, which is why I feel these flaws are worth pointing out. So while I will give Santa Inc. a small measure of respect for trying, if we're assessing objective quality in terms of the media achieving its own goals, then again, Santa Inc. falls flat. Oh, and the editing and sound design are also dog shite, but at this point I care about as much as they did. Well, a good editor is hard to find, so I'm calling it a miracle. Shut up, you worthless ass- I don't feel like there's much more to say that wouldn't just be beating a dead horse. So to conclude, Santa Inc. has firmly established itself as the worst comedy show of the year, as well as being one of the worst I've ever seen. A lot of people were giving this one-star reviews because of stuff they objected to in the trailer. But looking beyond that, there's still not a good show here. This isn't some misunderstood masterpiece. Does it deserve to be rated as the worst TV show ever made? No? Off the top of my head, I can think of Tommy Wiseau's The Neighbours and The Nut Shack that are both objectively worse than this. TAKE CARE OF THE CHICKEN! But it is pretty awful. You'd have to scrape not the bottom of the barrel, but the rotten underside of the barrel to find worse than this. It's not funny, it's not original, it's not well executed, and it's just crass and irreverent without any redeeming value. So if someone's ever on your naughty list, don't give them a lump of coal, give them this show on Blu-ray. That'll really get your hatred across. What a way to round out a truly awful year. They do say that the night is darkest before the dawn, so perhaps, just perhaps, this represents a low point before the start of greater things. Here's hoping. I'm out. Shalom! Thanks very much for watching, folks. Shout out to NordVPN for sponsoring once again. Check them out to support the channel, links in the description. Thanks also to my supporters on Patreon and YouTube channel members. For as little as $1 a month, patrons and members get early access to uncensored versions of videos without ads or sponsorships, as well as a mention here in the credits. Check out my merch store if you fancy, follow me on social media, and join my public Discord server, links all below. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.